I think the thing that most people will take away, because I certainly took away from this film, outside of you know the fun action sequences, is the family aspect. Yeah. There's just so many scenes within it, especially like you know uh, the, the conversation with the father. Mm -hmm. Like I remember having conversations. I still have <laughs> conversations like that that are very deep and meaningful. And then you have you know the crazy uncle that it just never ceases to make you laugh and smile. <laughs> and so. There's two scenes that I wanted to call attention to specifically to kind of get your thoughts on it. And uh, one of them is when Jamie first arrives home, he goes to this restaurant, it's the taste of home, the taco. And so I got to know what is the taste of home for you, whether it is a oh. restaurant or a family recipe that's just like, this is home. Man, it's, uh, it's hard to say one thing, yeah. but mofongo. What's that? Mofongo is smashed. So it's like uh, green plantains. OK. You cut them in slices. You fry them. Then you thin them out. And then you fry them again. Mm. And then you have a pilon, which is like a, it's like a bowl, right. a wooden bowl. You put them there with a little bit of uh, oil, uh -huh. garlic, salt, uh -huh. pork rind and you smash it together. Wow. And it's like a smashed plantain thing yeah, yeah. that is just an explosion of flavors. Wow. And that, you can stuff it with whatever type of food you want. So I like that, but the other stuff that I like is, it's uh, corned beef. Uh -huh. We call it corned beef, but we do it differently. We put, we put it's like a kitchen sink. Right, right. Uh, with rice, um, sliced avocado, and whiskey with coconut water. Nice. And that's home for me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that sounds, my, my family, uh, my mother's side comes from Mexico, so ours is like a rose con pollo, but it's just salsa mixed with the rice exactly. and chicken. Yeah, that's yeah. it. It's very simple. It's very simple. Like, it sounds complicated, but that's something that, you know, my grandma does, used to do, rest in peace. My grandma used to do uh, with her eyes closed, you know? Yeah. Right, right, right. The other sequence that it, uh, really hits home is whenever you're going someplace that's like a very big step in your life for him, it's, you know, getting this job interview and then your whole family being there to send you <laughs> off. And so if you can think of a specific instance, is there a moment where your family like most embarrassed you and, the, and then you think back on it like, but that was so my family, that was so beautiful too. It was, like, I guess I don't see it as embarrassing anymore. Right, like, it's it, beautiful. It, it becomes endearing. Like, when you're younger, you can get embarrassed. But my mom is, has always been my biggest bully. Yeah. And every time I wanted to, like, impress a girl or something, and she knew that I was trying to impress a girl, yeah. she would come out of nowhere and just be like, oh, my baby. Right, right. Like, so my mom's, I'm 40, and she still treats me like I'm 12. Yeah. So uh, I think my mom still embarrasses me every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, want, I wanted to ask about Ariana Braza playing, uh, nah, nah. and she gets like the T2 moment of being yeah. able to <laughs> hold the gun. And so uh, did y'all have a conversation about that, about like, we're, you're about to be right on the pedestal right there with Arnold <laughs> being able to hold this gun. And then also, can you talk about like what makes your Nana a superhero? Yeah, no. Um, we wanted Nana to have a heroic arc. Yeah. And we wanted Nana to, to play as your traditional beautiful grandmother that's always there for you, that's super caring and nourishing, but that, that matriarch that will always step up to the plate to protect her family. Yeah. Like, and that she won't wait for somebody else to do it. She's the one that's going to take the lead if nobody can. And we wanted to honor that legacy of the females in our lives mm -hmm. who have done a lot of sacrifices Definitely. to allow us to be where we are today. That's why like every female has a heroic arc in the formation of right. Jaime. Um, and one of the things that Nana, uh, Adriana Barraza understood right off the bat is that her background uh, comes from a revolutionary background. Yeah. And we wanted to pay homage to the female uh, revolutionaries of the Zapatistas that had the braids and everything moving forward, the indigenous women mm -hmm. of Mexico who fought 
alongside with the men to, to protect and free the country. And in, in order to honor that, Na, uh, Adina Barraza knows that story very well. And for her, it was a dream come true, you know, because she's always been, she always feels like, uh, like with a lot of Latinos, we are typically typecasted a lot. And sure, she's the Nana, but she's like Nana holding a I, weapon, protecting right, right. Jaime, right? So for her, being able to do that and be a badass, it's like she felt like she was honoring her ancestors mm -hmm. while she was doing it. So it was a dream come true for both of us. Yeah, yeah. Because I wanted to reflect that too. Yeah. Well, you gave her a gift. <laughs> I advise me back away. Oh! Oh! Town, I was down, but they see I'm up now.